Welcome to Pocus Geek. I'm Jared Marks, and in this video we're going to review a first trimester pregnancy ultrasound that ultimately led to the diagnosis of an ectopic pregnancy. As you may be aware, this is an important diagnosis to be able to make because it's one of the leading causes of death amongst pregnant patients. If you haven't had a chance to watch the previous videos I've made on how to scan the female pelvis, um, I will include some links throughout this that you can uh, refer to those. To begin, we want to place the probe just superior to the patient's pubic bone with the probe marker towards the patient's head. And we're going to obtain a view somewhat like this, where we're going to define the bladder. We're going to see the vaginal stripe just deep to that, and then the uterus will be on the left side of the screen towards the patient's head. Now this is obtained with a phased array probe. Typically you'd want to use a curvilinear, but at the time that I did this study, the location I was working at had limited resources and only had a phased array probe. And you'll also notice that there's very few images and that's because they had limited storage capacity for their studies. But I'm gonna walk you through this and show you the important anatomy. So what we wanna do from here is we wanna angle our probe up so that we see the uterus. And even though we only have a still image here, we wanna fan through the uterus and see if anything's visible within it. And we also want to pay attention to the surrounding anatomy. And what we see here is that the uterus is empty. There's essentially nothing in it. Typically, by finding an intrauterine pregnancy, we can rule out an ectopic pregnancy. However, in this case, we've noticed that the uterus appears empty. So after we've evaluated the entire uterus in a long axis by fanning from the right to the left and back and forth, and then capturing whatever images are needed, we're going to go to a short axis view and how we do this is we rotate the probe from, marker from being to, angled towards the patient's head toward the patient's right, and we get a view like this. And what we see here is that the bladder's at the top of the screen, and then we can see the uterine fundus here. And then we're going to fan down through this. So I like to fan superior to inferior, so we're going to fan from the fundus down to the cervix and get some views along the way. And we also want to, again, pay attention to see if there's anything in the uterus or anything um, in the adnexa. And one thing that we want to pay attention to or recognize here is that we see this. And that just looks a little odd when we compare it to the other side. The other side's pretty normal appearing. However, that just appears odd. As we continue to fan inferior, we're eventually going to reach the point where the uterus disappears. And we're going to see just a vaginal stripe right there. And that lets us know that we've evaluated the entire uterus at this point. After we've evaluated the uh, uterus in a transverse approach, then we want to look at the adnexa. And so we're going to look at the right adnexa. And so what we do is we angle our probe over towards the patient's right, and we can then see our uterus here on the right side of the screen. And that lets us pay attention to all this area to see if there's anything in there that is abnormal appearing. Fortunately, in this image, we do not see any adnexal masses, and so we can go over and we can look at the left side. Now, when we look at the left side, again, we're going to see the uterus right here. But if you remember, before we saw that this area just looked different to us, and that's concerning. And right now, we can't definitively say what that is, so we need to evaluate this further with a transvaginal ultrasound. And so... What you want to have the patient do is go urinate and empty their bladder to proceed. And then you're going to introduce the probe into the vagina with the probe marker towards the ceiling. The patient will be in the supine position and your probe marker will be towards the ceiling or towards the anterior of the patient. And we're going to get a view like this. And what we see is we have the uterus here and then the endometrial stripe right down the middle. The endometrial stripe is usually a hypo and or hypoechoic uh, structure within the uterus it lets us uh, be able to look for where the pregnancy should be. And then we see in these areas of blue that that's areas of a very small amount or trace amount of free fluid in the female pelvis. Uh, remember that if it does not go more than a third up uh, the posterior wall of the uterus, then it's typically uh, just going to be physiologic or a small amount of free fluid. So if we take those drawings off, we can see here that the endometrium is right down the middle of the uterus. And what we want to do again is we want to fan through the uterus of the fundus and focus on what's going on inside the uterus and any surrounding anatomy outside the uterus that may be pathological. It, often when we do a transvaginal ultrasound, we cannot see the entire uterus and the cervix all in one view because we're so close to it. And so we have to angle down and get the cervix. And again, you'll want to fan through that and make sure 
uh, that there's no structures there. To then move to a transverse view of the uterus, we're going to rotate the probe marker towards the patient's right and we'll obtain a view uh, that looks like this, or that would be going from about the 12 o'clock position to the 9 o'clock position. And we'll get a view of the uterus that looks like this, and again we'll see the endometrial stripe uh, right in the middle, and that's where we're going to try to pay attention and see if we can see any uh, signs of a pregnancy. Now as we fan through this uterus, we're going to notice that it's empty and there's nothing inside the uterus. And so once we've completed that and fanned all the way down, uh, and evaluated that entire uterus in a transverse view, we want to go look at the adnexa. And here we can see the right adnexa. And we do see the uterus here. And we do want to focus in this area. And it's hard to tell if there's, if that's the ovary or just some uh, um, pelvic structures, but it does not, it is not abnormal appearing. Um, and we can continue to scan. And if we remember from the transabdominal, our concern was definitely on the left. But I always go in the same sequence, so you know I usually scan the right. And you can do it however you want, but make sure you always follow the same sequence. So after we've evaluated the right, there's no adnexal masses and everything looks okay. We're going to look at the left. And then we come upon this and we, we think to ourselves, okay, here's the uterus. Well, what's this structure? So there's this structure that's round in nature, and we're not sure what it is. And we want to define that a little bit more. And what we can see here is that this is going to end up being a tubal ring, um, which is an ectopic pregnancy. And so if we move on, what we want to see here is that we can see that there is an ovary here. Here's our tubal ring or the structure that we were in question. And then a small amount of free fluid, again, adjacent to that structure. So I'm going to take that off, let you look at that again. And we're going to... Here's another view of that same structure and see how it's adjacent to the ovary. Now, ectopic pregnancies on the ovaries are very uncommon. Less than 1% of all ectopics happen here. So what you want to do if you're at this point and you need to define um, what that is, if it's part of the ovary or if it's not, you can place your probe right up against that and compress and see if they separate. And they will tip, if it's an ectopic, it will typically separate from it. Now, if it's an ectopic on the ovary, it won't. But that's one way to define this uh, separate from a corpus luteal cyst. So what we're going to see here is that we have the ovary and then the tubal ring. And then we're going to watch a video here just fanning through it and showing that they're two different structures. So we can see our ovary coming into view, then the tubal ring as we get closer to the uterus. And here's our tubal ring again, and then back, and we see the ovary. We can move forward, and we can you can, uh, if you want to, examine this with color Doppler. There is a finding called a ring of fire where you see that around uh, the tubal ring. Um, and I think that's okay to do. It doesn't really matter if you do that, in my opinion, just because a corpus luteal cyst will have a similar finding. And what's important is that you define whether that structure is part of the ovary or not, and if there's any contents within it. So just burn this image into your brain um, that this is a tubal ring, and this is pretty common uh, appearance of them. When we go back and we look, here again is our transabdominal approach, and we see again that uh, this left side of the patient over in here is definitely concerning for a pelvic mass that's outside of the uterus. I would not make a diagnosis effect topic just off of this. It would raise my concern, but you would definitely want to proceed with a transvaginal ultrasound uh, as we did in this case. And again, here's another image of our ovary and our tubal ring next to each other and then ultimately our tubal ring and it will often have as we see here an outer core and then an inner area um, so just pay attention to that as you scan you won't always have large amounts of free fluid but this is definitely diagnostic of an ectopic pregnancy and needs further uh, clinical care whether that be surgical or uh, medicinal at this point I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about this or other ultrasound related questions, feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or you can follow me on Twitter at pocusgeek. Take care.